Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to work an example problem that allows us to solve 4x um, and then finally using that to calculate the equilibrium concentrations when we can't ignore x and instead of having a quadratic equation, we have a polynomial. So let's check it out. We have the decomposition of hydrogen sulfide into hydrogen gas and the sulfur gas with an equilibrium constant of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 7th at 800 degrees Celsius. We initially have a 0.5 liter vessel that contains 1.25 moles, and remember this is initial, of our reactant hydrogen sulfide. And so basically we need to convert those moles and liters into molarity because we're working when we're working with our rice table we're either working in molarity units um, if we're talking about kc or pressure units if we're um, talking about kp um, so then we have to find the equilibrium concentration so that's the big clue that we need to use a rice table right so let's go ahead and get started same pattern we've seen before in the previous videos Write your reaction down. So we have hydrogen sulfide gas to make hydrogen gas and sulfur gas. That's our reaction. We need to input what we have in our container initially. So we would take 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth moles divided by 0.5 liters to get 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Looks like we didn't have any products initially, so we'll put zero in for those. And then how does hydrogen sulfide change over time? Always look at the balanced chemical equation and good, yes, it changes by minus two X. What about hydrogen gas? Good, plus two X and plus 1x for the sulfur gas there. All right, and then what we're most curious about is at equilibrium. So that's what the question's asking for, finding the equilibrium concentrations. And we do that by adding the initial plus the change. And so for hydrogen sulfide, it would be 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 2x. Hydrogen gas would be zero plus 2x so therefore 2x, and sulfur would be 0 plus 1x, and so just x here. And what do we need to do next? Once we've done our rice table, we need to write down the equilibrium constant expression. Very good. So products over reactants. Hydrogen gas to what power? Squared times sulfur to the first power, right? over hydrogen sulfide to the second power. Good. So make sure you don't forget those superscripts there from the balanced chemical equation. All right. Remember that these are always in equilibrium. If we're talking about the equilibrium constant, we only want equilibrium concentrations plugged in there. And so in this case here, this will be 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal, and if we're looking at hydrogen gas, that's 2x squared times x for the sulfur over 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 2x squared. So once again, this was the reactant. So I plugged that in here, raised it to that power, and these were the products. Be very, very careful. Definitely put parentheses around the expression. Sometimes I see students drop parentheses and they will write 2x squared, but that's not going to be the same 
because in the end, this is technically 4x squared, okay? At this, this term here, eventually we're gonna multiply it by x. So it'll end up being 4x cubed in this case, but be very, very careful. Always put parentheses. I always like to think of converting these little brackets into parentheses and just plugging in the formulas within those parentheses. All right, so we always wanna check. Can, is x small enough to ignore? So I'll use a different color here. And I will ignore, remember we can ignore plus or minus x. So in this case, minus two x. If it's small enough to ignore, then essentially it's like saying it's zero. It's insignificant compared to the initial concentration. Um, and then we just solve from x for there. So we have One point six seven times ten to the negative seventh is equal. I'm just gonna simplify a little bit more. Four x cubed over two point five times ten to the negative fourth squared. And therefore, in this case, x would be equal to one point three seven six seven times 10 to the negative fifth. We always need to check our work to see if x is small enough to ignore. So we take that number and we divide it by what? The initial concentration, good. And we multiply that by 100% and the answer needs to be less than what? 5%. When you plug this in, you get 5.5%, which means that x is not small enough to ignore. All right, which means we have a polynomial to solve. Okay, because this is not going to be in quadratic form. We can't use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is only used if you have the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That's not the case here. But I'm gonna teach you a trick to solving this polynomial. And it's through what is called the method of successive approximation. Or approximations, I should say. <laughs> so the method of successive approximations. What you will do is substitute the value you obtained For x in the original equation and solve for x again. You keep repeating this process. until consecutive x values are within 1% of, of another. All right, so this number here would be considered the first approximation for x. So we write down the formula again. So 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal to four x cubed over 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus two times 
this is where you plug in the approximation 1.3767 times 10 to the negative fifth that's square so once again you take the original equation okay, and I've combined this to be 4x cubed you substitute that first approximation in for x and then you solve for x again so you would I always when I input it into my calculator I take this number I multiply by 2 um, I store it as, you know, it, I have a graphing calculator, so I say store for letter A, and then I take this number here minus that A, and then I take that to square it. I store what I have here, and then I multiply it by that number, divide by 4, and then I take the cube root, and the way I do that is just to raise it to the one third. Okay. All right. Then when you solve for X, you get 1.27368 times 10 to the negative fifth. And these numbers here, comparing the first approximation with the second approximation are not 1% within one another. So comparing these two, they're not within 1%. And so therefore, we need to do this approximation again. So we just keep repeating until, like I said, you get consecutive numbers that are about with 1% or even less of one another um, to be confident in your results. I should also note that if you need help with your calculators at all, um, inputting uh, values and making sure you don't get error from your calculator, with incorrect orders of operation, then please, please contact me. I'm happy to help you out there. It, it's, it takes um, some time to get to know your calculator and to um, prevent those types of errors from happening. All right, so let's continue on with the next approximation. Following the same procedure, I'm going to plug in 1.67, or write down the original equation. It's equal to 4x cubed over 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 2 times, and then I put in that second approximation that we just calculated. squared once again solve for x and x is 1.28153 times 10 to the negative fifth so definitely close to the second approximation remember which was 1.27368 times 10 to the negative fifth. And those are within one person of another, but sometimes I just like to take it one more step just to be sure. Okay, so let's just do this one more time together. Get the original equation 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal to 4x cubed over. 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 2 times. Plug in that third approximation. Solve for x. And you get 1.28093 times 10 to the negative fifth. And these are definitely within 1% of one another, actually even less than that. So we have a really good approximation here. If you're wondering, how do you know if it's with 1%, then all you need to do is just calculate percent error. So percent error was always actual minus theoretical divided by theoretical times 100%, everything absolute value. And so I just treat 
um, the last approximation, like my theoretical value. Um, and then I treat this as like the actual value just to do comparison. These numbers are so close together, so. It will be a good percent error in a sense. As you see here, I take the absolute value, so that's why I have those brackets there. Times 10 to the negative fifth. Divide it by 28093 times 10 to the negative fifth. And remember, it's a percentage, so multiply by 100%. And you get 0.0462%. So it definitely checks out that they are well within um, a good range of one another, and we found um, we found the approximation. So, with that being said, now we can figure out the whole end game here is to find your equilibrium concentrations. And so, the equilibrium concentration for the hydrogen sulfide gas is equal to two point five times ten to the negative fourth minus two. I'm going to use the last approximation. You get 2.24 times 10 to the negative fourth molar for that reactant, the hydrogen sulfide, at equilibrium. And then we have hydrogen gas at equilibrium is equal to 2 times, once again plugging in that last approximation, times 10 to the negative fifth. And you get 2.56 times 10 to the negative fifth molar as the equilibrium concentration for the hydrogen gas. And then the sulfur product at equilibrium is equal to 1.28, it's equal to x, 1.28 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And then we always ask ourselves, does this answer make sense based on the equilibrium constant? So based on Kc equal to 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh, you would expect more reactants than products at dynamic equilibrium. And indeed that is the case. When you look at the concentrations that we just calculated here, you see that we have a more concentrated reactant of hydrogen sulfide than we do of the products hydrogen gas and sulfur gas. So this all checks out. Um, and you know now you can see how the method of successive approximations is a nice, easy way to solve for a polynomial. Now it may take, you know, three, you know, three tries, three successive approximations. It may take four, five, or six. So it can be a little lengthy process depending on what your equation is. Now, if some of you know how to solve polynomials, then that is amazing. Or if your graphing calculators do it for you, that's totally fine as well. But I wanted to just teach you the trick in case you are working with a scientific calculator. Um, this just helps to ease the math so much um, trying this out. So I hope that when you review over this, this will um, you know keep practicing with it um, so that you can use it for future equilibrium problems. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.